So Canadian poet Rupi Kaur says her book, Milk and Honey, was banned in Texas schools and libraries because it explores sexual assault and violence experienced by a young woman. So there are growing efforts to ban books that deal with race, with gender, or sexuality in the United States. Question is, who should decide what literature children are able to consume? What do we think? You Oof. know, this is one of those stories where no matter the generation or the technology or whatever has changed, mm -hmm. there are fundamental truths. And it's that youth, young people, will always think adults, us, are stupid because of these stories. Like, this is ridiculous. And I, the reason why, one of the You're reasons so is right. because... It's so right. Because let's take specifically Rupi Kaur, for example. Rupi Kaur gets memed all the time. Her poetry, yeah. Milk and Honey, has been memed online. It's a huge deal on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. She reads her own passages on those platforms, but also it's become a thing to meme Rupi Kaur. So there are people, generations of people, thousands of people who've already been reading her work online. And now you're gonna ban her book? So you oh allow kids gosh. to have phones. And the things that they have seen on their phones. And now, what do you think a book is gonna do for them? This is why adults, like, we're dumb. Like, we will never, ever appreciate how stupid we look to kids <laughs> for the, this reason. Yeah, and it happens all the time. Yeah, Jess, you're, you're blown away. I, I'm just blown away. That's such a great point. <laughs> no, like, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. What do you matter with the, the generation? Is as good a point as I do? Well, I, I mean, I just, I, I had the exact same thought, which is like, have they ever heard of the internet? And I do find it interesting <laughs> too, just historically speaking, like what things have gotten through and what things have been fixated mm -hmm. on. Like in our generation, everyone was worried about like death metal or like rap music. And there was all kinds of flurries in different states, probably in certain communities, even across Canada, who were like, let's not, you know, ban explicit, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, I remember as a kid reading uh, Stephen King's It. I was probably 13 when I read that. There's group sex scene in that with was one it, girl was that and a bunch of boys. Scene? And I think they're all... I got it from the school library for uh -huh. sure. I mean, it may not have been right in the school. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the other thing. It may not have been right in the school library. I got it from the public library. Hmm. So, like, I just, like, I guess, what is the point at a certain point when, like, uh, like to just ban the books in the schools, is there this kind of feeling that these people get of just, like, well, at least we didn't show it to our kids. And, but we don't care if they get it elsewhere. Is that the sentiment? Yeah, it's the delineation of like who, what, is it the parents' uh, realm of responsibility to teach their kids this stuff or is it the school? And that's a big question. Like that is a fundamental question. I do agree that this seems to happen like every couple of years these stories yes. come into the news. Most recently, I think there was a bunch of books about the Holocaust. I mean, listen, throughout history, we've seen this. I, I take a bigger step back, and this is the moment when we, we talk about this and tease ourselves as Canadians that we always like to sit on our high horse, like we're so much better than those no. Americans. But I will say that there is something happening down there when you think about all the legislation that is getting passed. So there's this story in Texas with Rupee. There is the don't say gay legislation in Florida. There is the banning of abortions. It just feels like there's a cascading number of states, state by state, that is, mm -hmm. is really passing a restrict abortion uh, abortion legislation. And then I just sit back and I just think, what is, like, it feels like a little handmaid's tale in real time in terms of what is happening in a country that pats itself on the back for being the land of free speech. Yeah, and I just don't only know how you... Them. Only when it suits you. And, and I think that that is, you know, when you talk about the civil, civil liberties groups... This is sometimes what they have to say is not popular, but the idea is that if you believe in free speech, this is actually part of that. Yeah, I, I think I, I hear you on the legislators in the U.S. I think the culture is the same in this country. We just don't have those politicians championing the issues yet. Yet, yet. yet. We might see that here mm -hmm. in the next few elections. But also to your point, it, it is exact. It is stupid for us to be trying to ban. <laughs> Uh, anything educational. And for me, like I have a five-year-old son and I'm learning myself right now how to parent. And I feel like that's part of the process. So when a community says, ban these books, what I'm hearing is a bunch of parents saying, I'm not comfortable learning or talking about this. Mm -hmm. I'm, I am mm -hmm. not mature enough to handle this and I will not be able to teach my child how to handle it maturely either. That's honestly, or I don't want to answer questions else, about it. Yeah, I should or, be able to tackle and 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 take on. Yeah. Well, I think the the, the the people doing this were saying they didn't want they wanted to ban any books that made students feel discomfort. And in some senses, <laughs> I think like some of the best books and the books that should be it should be a prerequisite 
to feel but a little bit of is uncomfortable. Yes, exactly. Growth and growth you're, you're going to have a generation of babies. Growth is uncomfortable. <laughs> we have a budgie at home. I think My son wanted a budgie. And the, at the pet store, they said, if it turns blue, it's a boy. If his beak turns brown, it's a girl. Well, it hasn't really changed any color in the last few months. Our budgie is non-binary. Yeah, yeah. We, we, did we you have that budgie as they <laughs> yeah. them? Yeah, and so my five-year-old is going around. He doesn't really say non-binary. He's like, our budgie's binary. And people are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm trying to learn as I go, yeah. right? And I think that that's what parents need to do too, especially with educational topics is just learn as you go. Yeah. As you Cynthia, go. what were you going to say? But they're afraid that if you introduce the topic, that you're immediately, there's this idea that by learning about something, you're indoctrinating. Mm -hmm. At least that's the, the the funny thing. And lately, speaking of memes, there's been a bunch of memes going around um, I, I, that are showing sort of like, if we're going to pin anything, like heterosexuality is something that's indoctrinated, like that you see all kinds of memes and, and you know examples of like, you know, like heterosexual romance. But clearly, it doesn't matter. There's still gay people. So you can't convince people to be something just by seeing it. It's such a ludicrous kind of uh, narrative that continues to be perpetuated amongst certain communities. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking about being perpetuated, grown-ups are dumb, as kids will always <laughs> believe. So.